Good morning, St Joseph class, and a very happy Wednesday to you. Now, on Monday, we started to think about the effect that American popular culture has on us, right here, right now, in West Sussex in 2020. So things like the books we read, the films we watch, the music we listen to, the food we eat, and even the clothes we wear. Some of those things can be traced back to originating in America. So if you remember, we looked back originally 100 years ago, to begin with, to the 1920s, and we got up as far as the end of the 1960s. So today we're going to go from the 1970s through to the 2000s to see and think about how American culture still affects us here right now. OK, so I'm just going to bring you over here and we can see the screen is loaded and ready to go with 1970. The 1970s were a tumultuous time. In some ways, the decade was a continuation of the 1960s. Women, African Americans, Native Americans, gays and lesbians, and other marginalized people continued their fight for equality. And many Americans joined the protest against the ongoing war in Vietnam. A new right mobilized in defense of political conservatism and traditional family roles and the behaviour of President Richard Nixon undermined many people's faith in the good intentions of the federal government. By the end of the decade, these divisions and disappointments had set a tone for public life that many would argue is still with us today. So here we can see how the fashions are ever-changing. Clothing fashion. In the 1970s, it was daring carefree and diverse. For women, skirts ranged from extremely long to drastically short, and fabrics were bright and boldly patterned. Men wore their shirts tight, their trouser legs wide, and their moustaches long. Hippie styles of dresses entered the mainstream, and new ethnic-inspired fashion imitated styles from all corners of the world. Mirrorball Disco. The rise of disco had an enormous cultural impact on the American audience. It was the music they heard on the radio, the music they danced to. It affected fashion. It affected club culture. It even affected film. During the 1970s, rock music dance clubs, a discotheque is a dance club that plays music on records or discs, rather than having a live band, became extremely popular. Young people wearing polyester bell bottoms and platform shoes lined up outside popular clubs for a chance to enter dance floors lit with bright pulsing lights and dance to recorded music with a pounding beat. Disco was the word that described the clubs, the music, the dance style and the fashions that grew out of the scene. The VW van became larger, sleeker and more powerful and still has a rear engine, so the engine was in the back. Flower power. Flower power was a slogan used during the late 1960s and early 1970s as a symbol of passive resistance and non-violence ideology. It is rooted in the opposition movement to the Vietnam War. Hippies embraced the symbolism by dressing in clothing with embroidered flowers and vibrant colors. TV. In the 1970s, TVs were more commonly freestanding, without built-in legs, so viewers had freedom with the placement of their set. It was during this era that remote controls made their grand entrance, having originally attached, been attached to the set by a cord. It was the decade where the government announced that all television would be broadcast in colour by March 1975. By the early 1970s, a poll found that the majority of Americans relied more on television than on newspapers for their news. The US government also understood television to be a powerful tool. In fact, the 1970s became the decade where television news felt the true weight of government intervention 
as embattled networks gallantly fought to preserve their independence. And as cable continued to snake its way around the country, cable networks began to deliver. HBO became the first pay cable network to go onto the air. Cable networks, Showtime, ESPN and Nickelodeon debuted as well. Telephone. AT&T introduced Touchtone, which allowed phones to use a keypad to dial numbers and make phone calls instead of a rotary. Each key would transmit a certain frequency, signalling to the telephone operator which number you wanted to call. While much better than the rotary dial, these dial tones were subject to hoaxing by what were called blue boxes. Using a blue box, you could make free long distance phone calls. Radio. Radios were always used for listening to your favorite shows, but by the 1970s, it often associated with listening to rock and roll. Since the radio is used more for listening to music, it has now become portable. Record player or stereos for kids and teenagers came with two speakers, volume control, and played the latest singles or 45s automatically. Moving on then to the 1980s. The Watergate scandal, the Vietnam War, uncertainty in the Middle East, an economic crisis at home had undermined Americans' confidence in their fellow citizens and in their government. By the end of Jimmy Carter's pres presidency, the idealistic dreams of the 1960s were worn down by inflation, foreign policy turmoil and rising crime. In response, many Americans embraced a new conservatism in social, economic and political life during the 1980s, characterised by the policies of President Ronald Reagan. Often remembered for its materialism and consumerism, the decade also saw the rise of the yuppie, an explosion of blockbuster movies and the emergence of cable networks like MTV, which introduced the music video and launched the careers of many iconic artists. Here we can see again how fashion has been changing decade by decade. The clothing style trends of the 80s included big teased hair or spiral perms for women, mullets or more clean cut styles for men, baggy and oversized tops, leggings, high waist jeans, ripped and acid washed denim, tight exercise clothing for everyday wear, leg warmers and spandex, headbands, shoulder pads, boxy silhouettes, large bold prints and colourful pastels and bright colours. Thanks to the creation of MTV, some fashion trends were directly related to music. Roller skates. Couples skate, the hokey pokey, Simon says, and the amazing feeling of cruising around the skating rink backwards. That was roller skating in the 1980s. Sunglasses. Shutter shades, also known as slatted shades or Venetian blind shades, are louvered sunglasses. Instead of having lenses, the design is characterised by its shutter motif, which is part of the frame. The shades were suitable for both men and women and were available in an assortment of styles and colours. The Polaroid camera. Polaroid camera. Polaroid Impulse 600 came to market in 1988 and retailed at $90. Aim, snap, and wait for the picture to develop. The camera that produced instant pictures. Cell phones or mobile phones. Motorola gave us one of our first mobile phones which started a technological revolution. Commonly referred to as the brick, this was truly the beginning of the completely portable telephone with no cords or wires. It was also the first cell phone approved by the FCC and small enough to be portable. Unlike today's cell phones, this phone came in only three colour combinations, dark grey, tan and grey and tan and white. However, if you wanted this technology, you had to be prepared to shell out just under $4,000 for it. $3,995 for a brick. The floppy disk. 
Data storage, these devices went through some changes from 8 inches to 5 and a fourth inches. Cassettes. Cassettes were little plastic boxes filled with musical joy. Cassettes were not new in the 80s, but they became wildly popular for two big reasons and several smaller reasons. One, cassettes were made better to record music, as opposed to the older type that were more for dictation purposes. The music sounded good on high fidelity cassettes and players. Two, it would fit in the pocket of your guest jean jacket. The advent of Sony's Walkman in 1979 meant that we could pop in a cassette, slide on headphones and listen to music as we worked out, walked around or just hung out in our rooms. Awesome. Cassettes were way tougher and more portable than old school vinyl records. Three, the coolest thing about cassettes, though, was the rec recordability. You could make your own mixtapes by hand selecting tunes from tapes you owned. Boomboxes often had two cassette de decks for just that purpose. You popped in the blank tape on one side and already, the already recorded tape on the other. You were then creating your own masterwork albums. Four, you could listen to the radio and hit record just as the song you had in mind began to play. This method wasn't ideal, as you often clipped off the beginning of the song and tended to get a little unwanted DJ chatter along with the music. It was, however, free. So, like, bonus. We can see the boombox radio and one of the original designs of the Sony Walkman, the cassette player, portable cassette player. Something you might recognize there on the left, a Rubik's Cube. A teacher was looking for an, 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 an innovative, an innovative even, excuse me, method of teaching his students about 3D objects and came up with what would be called a Rubik's Cube. He patented this clever cube and made millions in the early 80s. There were 43 quintillion combinations of solving the cube, which prompted many books on how to solve it. The world record for solving the cube is 16.5 seconds. 100 million cubes have been sold worldwide and are even now somewhat popular in certain places in the world. Watch. It didn't matter whether you were an ultra nerd or a fashionista. Everyone wanted to tell time and style during the 1980s. We all craved the latest technology, which in the wristwatch world included LCD displays and calculators. And we can see how the TV has changed and the onset of videotapes. In the 1980s, going to video rental stores was a huge part of many people's weekly routines. During that decade, they popped up in nearly every populated area, providing entertainment, options for people who prefer to watch movies at home without relying entirely on whatever was on TV or cable. They're all mostly gone now, replaced by Netflix and other online services that allow customers to stream movies at their leisure. The video cassette recorder, or VCR, allowed Americans to record television shows and watch them according to their own schedule and view feature films in the privacy of their own houses. The 1990s. America at large was prospering in the 1990s. The United States economy grew by an average of 4% per year between 1992 and 1999. An average of 1.7 million jobs a year were added to the American workforce. The quality of television radically improved. Seinfeld and The Simpsons had their premieres in 1989. And in the 1990s, they blew up along with Friends and NYPD Blue. All of them broadcast network series. HBO before the 90s, a channel for movies, boxing, decided to swing ad episodic televisions with The Larry Sanders Show and then with The Sopranos. The digital age got fully underway in the 1990s. At the beginning of the decade, almost none of us had heard of the web, and we didn't have browsers, search engines, digital cell phones, networks, fully 3D games, or affordable and powerful laptops. By the end of the decade, we had them all. Steve Jobs returned to Apple and conjured its rebirth. By the end of the decade, we all had cell phones, but not smartphones. We were not overconnected by our devices. Recorded music sales nearly doubled during the decade. 
Newspapers and magazines were thriving. Again, we can see the change again in boys and girls fashion. Desktop computers became more popular. And the original Apple computer, desktop Apple computer, they went through a series of having different colors. Cell phones became more popular and slightly smaller, but they weren't smart, still weren't smartphones in the 1990s. But telephones with digital answering machines became all the rage. Furbies were a must have toy and Game Boys were a must have gadget. And Tamagotchi was an electronic pet that you had to look after and care for in a similar way that you'd look after a real live animal pet. 2000, September the 11th, 2001, terror attacks against the United States. They set the tone for the 2000s. The US entered multiple conflicts in the war on terror, beginning in 2001 with the invasion of Afghanistan and again in 2003 with the Iraq war. Hybrid vehicles became mainstream as more companies started producing them. Handheld technology became smaller and more powerful. Mobile phones became universal and in the middle of the decade, the smartphone was created, most noticeably the iPhone in 2007, allowing people to carry what amounted to a small computer with internet access around with them at all times. The development of social media was also influential during this decade with the popularity of social sharing websites like MySpace, Facebook, YouTube and Twitter. In 2008, the United States made history electing Barack Obama as the first African-American president of the United States. The decade ended with the 2008 financial crisis, causing a recession as the housing bubble, auto industry and banking system collapsed in the US and several other developed nations around the world. So again, you can see the clothing fashions. Crocs became a very popular footwear item. The iPod was almost a predecessor to the iPhone. It was a portable music carrier. So if you think about the Sony Walkman in the 1980s, ultimately replaced by the iPod at the beginning of the 2000s. DVDs replaced videos as the way to watch movies at home. Laptops made computing portable, finally. Playstations became one of the main game playing accessories at home. Also the Wii, as computer games really took over. So the future, we've looked at the 1920s up to the 2000s. I would like you to think about the future. If you were a designer or imaginator, creator of the future, what's our destiny going to be? What does the future hold for us? How will we be dressing, eating and getting from one place to another? What will our cars look like? Will our homes be smart homes and do everything for us, including clean? Including it in this section is the possible of what the future might hold for us. Could we have flying ship airplanes of the future? Could houses look something like that one? Boys fashions, what are boys going to wear? What are girls going to wear? What will cars look like in the future? What will cities look like? What will sneakers or trainers look like? What will mobile telephones look like? So that is a glimpse through the decades. So what I'm going to add for you onto our class tile, 
for you to have a think about what we've discovered together and what you might want to predict for the future, this form will be there. So what do you remember about 1970? What do you remember about 1980? What do you remember about the 1990s? What do you remember about 2000? But then what do you predict for the future? So if you were an inventor, what would you invent in the future and why? Describe a future sneaker or a training shoe. Describe a future car. Describe a future house. Describe a future cell phone or mobile phone. Again, comparing products of today with products as they used to be. So think about those multicolored Apple desktop computers. What does your desktop computer look like now? Remember the brick, the Motorola brick telephone, the mobile phone. Thinking about as it was, but then drawing and describing one as they are today, here and now. Shoes, thinking about those funky boots, multicolored leather boots there. How would you compare and contrast them with the shoes you wear today? Now, my notepad of the future. I'll add this as a PDF template form onto the class tile as well. Now here, I'd like you to maybe, uh, you can make a design or plan out your ideas for the future. So this is going to be where you put your notes thinking about what the future will look like, different aspects of the future. And then if you choose to design anything, so it could be a phone, some new trainers, new clothes, a building, a new car for the future, you can put your design, the, the drawing here, but then you can tell me about it here and explain and add your notes. So that is your design pad of the future. So, hopefully that has given you a dashing glimpse of the decades of the last hundred years from the 1920s right up into the 2000s. And maybe thinking about it, what would you add if you were to talk about the 2010s? Maybe you can have a think about and look up research, the things we spoke of there. So. Gadgets around the house, what houses looked like in the 2010s, what cars looked like, what clothes looked like, what, what were the popular films, what was the popular music, how did people listen to music? So as you can see, American pop culture, or popular culture, has had quite a lasting, long-lasting impact on the way we live our lives here in West Sussex in 2020. And I'm sure it will continue to have a long lasting effect into the future. So I hope you've enjoyed our road trip together. I've certainly learned lots and lots. I'm thinking of just one thing connecting to our Native American studies. I've just heard in the news that the Washington Redskins, who are a famous American football team, are on the verge of changing their name because I remember we spoke about um, Native Americans being called Red Indians um, when they were first discovered, very inaccurately called Red Indians, and the name was changed to Native Americans. Well, the Washington Redskins are now going to change their name. So you see these things, so history is happening all the time and we're learning all the time as well. So I hope you've enjoyed learning about America with me as much as I have. And I look forward to seeing you again very soon. Okay, so take care and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.